2004 put on one of the best championship battles we have ever seen under NASCAR's new points format in what was known as the first chase. In an emotional 10 race battle, Kurt Busch came home victorious over Jimmy Johnson by a slim 8 point margin. Many in the NASCAR community who were once skeptical of the format were now on the side of the chase as NASCAR's TV ratings were the highest in history. But still fans voiced their displeasure for the format, citing invalidity in Bush's title due to his inconsistent start of the season. Regardless of that, the chase was here to stay, and the second time around was just as good as the first. Knocked out early, Kurt, on your way up pit road. Where are you going? What's the message you want to deliver? I don't know who the Gucci for the 10 is. I just want to talk to him a little bit. The 10 car, we've had issues in the past, and this isn't the place to repay somebody. Especially what's so involved here with this championship. Yeah, it's pretty big, isn't it? But when you have 230 mile an hour race cars running around at 185, that's, this is what you're going to get. I don't care. The drivers can't control it. You can say they can, but we don't, we don't really have control over the situation, and we can't get anything done in uh, 230 mile an hour vehicles. And, you know, it's like uh, riding around out there uh, kitty cars, you know at 185. Guys, we're, we're not racing for the win right here. We're racing to finish. That's it. Just whatever we can do to survive tonight. That's all we're here for. Because a lot of guys aren't going to get to finish. That's, that's it. We're done giving points away this year. Uh, we're going after what we feel like is ours. And uh, uh, it's like I told Jimmy Maycard and Zippy when I put my uniform on today, I said, I don't feel like I'm suiting up for a race. I feel like I'm suiting up for war. So, uh, you know, he, he wants war. He's got it today. For the second time, New Hampshire will host the opening event of the chase. Last year, the eventual champion won this event, putting even more focus on trying to start off the right way. Championship points leader Tony Stewart is looking to do just that. Tony's been on a run for the ages through the summer. Prior to his first win of the season at Sonoma, Tony's average finish was 15.2. Since then, however, it's 3.8. The team contributes some of its success to a flag that crew chief Greg Zipadelli put up during their win at Sonoma. The flag reads, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Since then, they haven't finished worse than 8th. Second place to Stewart is Greg Biffle, leading the charge of the Roush drivers. Biffle has had his own breakout season, similar to his teammate Matt Kenseth and Kurt Busch the prior two years. Many think it's his turn to bring Roush three consecutive cup titles. Third place is a man who is saying goodbye to the sport, Rusty Wallace. Having one of his most consistent years in nearly a decade, Rusty is in the middle of a championship for his goodbye tour. Some are curious if he's still ready to retire, but Rusty will answer those questions later. Right now, he wants to win one more title. Behind him is runner-up from last year, the man who went on an incredible run to end the season, and came up just 8 points short, Jimmy Johnson. His run-up to the chase was nearly identical to last season's, with an average finish of 22nd in the last 6 races. Can Johnson finally win the title? If so, He's going to need to execute throughout the entire chase instead of the final six races like last year. Fifth place is a man who knows all too well about execution, Kurt Busch. The reigning champion and winner from last weekend at Richmond, Busch is looking to pick up momentum like last year and win his second title. Sixth in points is the sentimental favorite, Mark Martin, the third Roush driver so far in the chase. Mark is trying to win his first title in what was originally supposed to be his retirement season. He will come back next year as he tries to finally win a title. Seventh is a lone Everham car in the chase for the second consecutive season, Jeremy Mayfield. The dark horse for two years in a row, Mayfield thinks he could pull the upset and win the title yet again, and this time he's got more motivation. In the eighth seed for the first time is a tie. Both teammates Matt Kenseth and Carl Edwards hold down the eighth spot, rounding off the five Roush cars that are in this year's chase. Edwards has been on an incredible run as a proverbial rookie and Kenseth has been on a comeback, carrying a ton of momentum into this year's chase. Finally, the last man in for the second consecutive season is Ryan Newman. After another incredibly close race for the chase, Newman squeaks in during the midnight hours to fight for the championship yet again. Many count out this team for its inconsistency, but as we saw last year, anything can happen in the chase. The starting lineup for today's race is headed by championship leader Tony Stewart. He is starting next to one of the men who did not make the chase this year. Jeff Gordon. Gordon is starting this week with new crew chief Steve Letard in the box. Letard has worked with Gordon for years at various positions on the team, as looking to start off his tenure with a win. Matt Kenseth is the next chaser in the field. 
starting 4th. Rusty Wallace is in 7th, Mayfield in 8th, Johnson 10th, Kurt Busch 12th, Ryan Newman 13th, Mark Martin 15th, Carl Edwards starts 24th, and Biffle is 26th. As they pace through turn 4, the pace car makes the hard left-hand turn off onto the pit lane. And we go green in the second chase. Let the chase begin. Stewart jumps out front early and captures five vital bonus points. The cars slip and slide through the opening laps as rains from overnight have washed the track of rubber from practice, and teams will need to wear back in the track. Everybody tiptoes through the opening laps until... Well, look at that slide there on the oh, 10 car. and the 97 car the the wall. Oh. Bush in the wall, the defending series champion. Caution is out at New Hampshire. One down already. Oh, my goodness. But last year, I said, I think you can have one mulligan in the 10 race. Go to the, garage. the reigning champion has been crashed. We are not even five miles into the race, and Kurt Busch's car has been totaled. Scott Riggs gets loose and spins the man that was near perfect last year at this part of the season. And Kurt refuses to give up, driving a smoldering heat back to the pit lane, dousing the track in oil. Kurt is livid and hops out of his car, and he wants to go have a conversation with the crew chief of the 10 car. Officials attempt to keep up with him as he marches down to the pit box. He climbs the top, and crew chief Rodney Childers jaws back and forth with Kurt about the situation. After about 30 seconds, Kurt crawls back down to ground level. Within an instant, the man is blitzed by an army of reporters, all trying to get his account of the situation. Apparently, about six weeks prior, Scott and Kurt got into it in Indianapolis, which led to an incident. Last week at Richmond, they also had an incident, where Riggs cut down on Kurt's right front, affecting the handling of his car. While Kurt fends off the reporters, the team is in the garage, repairing the car as quickly as they can. They know any point will be important. And after nearly 13 laps under caution to clean up Kurt's oil streak, the race restarts on lap 16. But quickly, the yellow comes back out again for JJ Yaley turned in turn 1. The race restarts yet again on lap 22, and Ryan Newman finally starts to make moves in the middle of the field. He bodies Day Blaney as they become one of the many to complain of low grip. Stewart starts to pull away from the battle for second between Gordon and Dale Earnhardt. And Greg Biffle, meanwhile, has moved up to the 15th place spot, and Edwards is in 19th. The young Carl Edwards was asked about his expectations for the chase, to which he stated that his worst tracks were New Hampshire and Dover, and if he can make it through without any big misfortune here, he could have a chance to win the championship. While those two Rouseketeers have worked forward, their veteran of the Armada, Mark Martin, has fallen the 25th. He is running Kurt Busch's winning car from Richmond the previous week, and currently it is not translating over at all. Things flip, though, as the run progresses, the race past lap 50, and Mark starts to push back towards the front as Carl now slips to 23rd. At the front, Stewart has built a healthy two-second lead, and now Mark Martin's car's finally come to life. He works all the way up to 16th, one spot behind Biffle, and Carl is begging for a caution. During his teammate's turmoil, Kurt Busch has now gotten back on track on lap 69, nearly 65 laps down. As Kurt rolls down the pit lane, NASCAR gets on the radio and asks him not to lose his composure on track. He doesn't have long until a caution on lap 73 for Ken Schrader blowing a tire groups the field back together. On the first round of stops, Matt Kenseth asks to free up his car along with Newman, who has Roger Penske spotting for him today. They race out the pit lane and Tony barely beats Matt to the line. They restart on lap 78, the lap car is holding up the inside line. They hold up Kenseth enough for Tony to pull away yet again. And past lap 80, many non-chasers are putting a respectable performance together. The 38 of Sadler and the 29 of Harvick are running the best of them, inside the top 5. Eventually, Sadler is able to actually take second from Kenseth, who fades the third spot. And whilst the two forwards fight on track, Kurt Busch has been able to complete enough laps to pass Wayne Patterson, giving him 3 points. Eventually, Ryan Newman moves past Harvick for 5th, using a line recommended to him by Roger Penske that has greatly improved the handling of his car. Past lap 90 now, Stewart moves closer to the clinching the 5 bonus points for most laps led, and has no threat to lose his lead to any chasers, as Matt Kenseth fades to 5th. Outside the top 5 are Johnson and Wallace, both 8th and 9th, having a quietly consistent day. Johnson, like normal, has Chad Knauss in the pit box, but also has champion crew chief Robbie Loomis there as well. Loomis is waiting to move to Petty Enterprises in 2006, and since he is no longer working with Gordon, he has jumped on for the effort to help Hendrick get a championship. By the third mark in the race, 
Five chasers have worked into the top 10 trying to keep up with Stewart's blistering pace. They get help from a caution on lap 103 for the 77 blowing a tire, and Kurt Busch by the time of the yellow is 41st, making up another position. Everybody comes down the pit road once again, and strategy is a little bit more of a mixed bag with having only 30 laps on the sets of tires. Stewart and Sadler take two and Kenseth finishes his stop and pulls out of the box, but his right front wheel locks in place. The Ryby Riser led team goes into an absolute panic. A lug nut has somehow found its way into the right front wheel assembly and has jammed the entire system. Kenseth will have to drive all the way around the track, dragging that right front. And while the tire will blow, it won't rip apart the right front fender. The team is more concerned about the suspension damage it might cause. And they get everything sorted out, and they send them back out on track the last car in the lead lap. The race restarts with the two-tire tandem of Sadler and Stewart racing hard for the position. And while it takes longer than the last few runs, Tony is eventually able to clear Sadler and take the lead. Kenseth is now working from 27th from the mistake, and the team found the lug nut wedged between the brake caliper and rotor having to use a chisel to knock out the jam. Kenneth will soon pass his slowest teammate on track, Carl Edwards. The young rookie is struggling tremendously, running slower lap times than Kurt Busch, and is needing some help on the next stop. Newman works past some of the two tire people to get back into the top five, and reports now flood in from the pit road of tires being worn down to the cords. Shortly after the report, caution comes out again for Ken Schrader who slaps the wall with another blown tire. And again, this was from another 30-lap run. Teams pit again, with most not making any major changes. And this time, Tony takes four tires and loses a ton of track position. The new leaders of the race now are Mark Martin and Jeremy Mayfield, both gaining a ton of track position. Rusty Wallace falls the furthest through the field with a bad stop after he slides through his pit box. And on top of that, he'll be given a one-lap penalty for being serviced outside the box. Stewart will restart ninth as Martin charges the field back to the green flag. Matt Kenza through all this has somehow already worked back up to the 5th place position under strategy and is hoping for a quick yellow. The luck turns for Matt and he gets that caution, when McMurray and Spencer collide in turn 2. Rusty Wallace loses out on the lucky dog to his brother Mike, and the race restarts again this time just past halfway. Stewart has worked his way up to the 6th spot already, as the racing starts to get tighter and tighter. Stewart is flying, and he goes for a pass on Kenza, but accidentally nudges the 17. As Kenza slides out of the groove, Stewart immediately asks to apologize for the incident. Eventually, Tony moves right back up to the second place position and slots Mayfield back to third. Kenseth on his old tires has mired him back to 10th, and Biffle still rides right outside the top 10 and 11th. The intensity is interrupted, however, by Casey Kane, who drills the wall off a of turn two. The car is bent terribly, so bad the right rear is sitting off the ground. Kane was put around by Kyle Busch, who, whether intentionally or not, has infuriated Casey Kane. The 9 car in its crooked state goes on track to try and pay back Kyle, and NASCAR is having none of it. He is called to the hauler with the rest of his team, and the 9 car is officially parked. This has benefited Rusty Wallace now, who is going to get the lucky dog, and the race restarts again on lap 171. Stewart is able to make quick work of leader Mark Martin, and Kenseth and Johnson slog it out in the teens with mediocre race cars. Again, this run doesn't last long as a caution comes out for Kyle Busch, who is now spun on the backstretch. This time, all the leaders come in the pit, but six cars stay out. Ryan Newman is now the leader of the race. Michael Waltrip is second, and Kenseth and Johnson find themselves third and fourth. Stewart about to restart outside the top 10 on lap 184, as Newman collects his five bonus points. He gets help from lap cars, as he soon yards himself from everybody. Stewart begins to get desperate in traffic and dives his car into a hairy situation for 11th. Not long after, a caution comes out for Mike Bliss and Joe Nemechek. Then the cameras cut to a destroyed Robbie Gordon halfway down the backstretch. Looking at the replay under caution, Michael Waltrip right reared Robbie Gordon straight into the fence, racing him hard as a lap car. While it looks intentional, it's hard to say if maybe Michael did just get loose and correct down into him. Regardless, Robbie Gordon is infuriated. He pulls straight across traffic, almost catching Chaser Tony Stewart in the mayhem. He tries to take a swipe at Michael, and then just gets out of his car and runs across traffic. He takes his helmet and throws it straight at the door of the 15, and then is taken straight to an ambulance. Tony Stewart gets on the radio and says he's just trying to take all this in, and is glad for once that he is not one of the people angry. Then, to add to the chaos, Mike Bliss absolutely totals his car under caution as he reports he lost a rear brake rotor trying to catch up to the field. This lengthens the caution even more as cleanup continues, and NBC gets an interview with Robbie Gordon. Robbie, obviously very frustrated with Michael Waltrip. 
You know, Michael, everybody thinks Michael's this good guy. He's not the good guy like he actually is. The caution was out, and he wrecked me. And he's a piece of... After Robbie has completed booking his overnight stay in the NASCAR hauler, the race restarts again on lap 202. Newman is able to pull away as Johnson and Kenseth race hard again. Tony moves up behind them for fourth, and now Sadler spins off a turn four, but the race stays green. Mark Martin from the situation now is reporting a tire rub, and Stewart now has set his sights on Newman, beginning to chase him down. Matt Kenseth, meanwhile, is confused by everything in the race, and has gone to the mindset of, quote, just doing his thing. Matt isn't particularly wrong. Strategy has gone drastically confusing, as nobody knows who's good on gas, who isn't, who will pit, who will double pit, nobody knows. On top of the topsy-turviness of the race, Ryan Newman has now begun to run faster laps than Tony, and is actually starting to pull away. Newman's crew reports that they'll make their final stop on lap 240, and will have to put themselves in danger of possibly getting trapped a lap down. The debris is now being reported on the front stretch by Matt Borland, as he is practically on his knees begging for a caution. NASCAR will not budge, and the so-called debris is identified as a beer cozy, and Newman comes in with 65 to go. Tony takes the lead and officially locks the most laps lead bonus up. The big problem for Tony, however, is he is one of the many short by at least 20 laps on fuel. The closest guy to making it in the top five is Matt Kenseth, who can go to about 10 to go, but even he can't make it. Everybody now is playing in stops around 30 to 40 to go, and the first car in running position that can make it all the way on gas is reportedly Carl Edwards way back in the field. Kenseth comes in first with 46 to go and takes four tires. Johnson's next two laps later also taking a fresh set of good years. And now with 43 to go, race leader Tony Stewart comes in for what will be his final stop. The team puts four on it and fills it up with gas, hoping their strategy might be able to win them the race. Rusty Wallace comes in with 42 to go, and is the first with a unique strategy. He takes two, and just enough gas to make it. But he is trumped by the ultimate play. Jeremy Mayfield is going to go for it on gas, and he will not pit to the finish. Reportedly only a half lap short, Jeremy is one of 10 trying to go the full distance, and his slowed pace has let Ryan Newman back on the lead lap now. Biffle, meanwhile, has to pit ahead of Mayfield, and is trying to lead a lap to get 5 bonus points. His crew chief, Dove Reichert, reports that he is within a lap of his calculations of him running out of fuel, but decides to go for broke to get the bonus points. He does get the bonus points, and then immediately comes in for fuel, barely making it on fumes. Through all of this, Stewart now gets a massive tire rub, and everybody begins to search where Tony got this rub from. They find that he clipped Dale Jr. while he was pitting, giving him the aggressive rub. The 20 team is preparing. He's going to have to come in to pit to fix the rub, probably. The rub keeps persisting, getting worse and worse, as many watch on, waiting for it to blow at any second. With 28 to go now, Brian Vickers leads and says he is not planning on coming in. The race keeps going, and in a fit of luck, Tony Stewart's tire rub has somehow subsided, and he's digging hard once again. Vickers then suddenly pits, as they realize they were way off than originally thought, and Harvick comes in a lap after. And then, caution. Somebody hit the commitment cone onto the track. It turns out it was Kyle Busch who hit it, and it gave him a flat tire. Now things have gotten even more confusing. Tony now reports he doored another car lapping them, and damaged the entire right side of his car. All the cars, including Jeremy Mayfield, who thought they could make it, are now pitting and taking four tires for a charge to the pack late. This puts Newman and Stewart 1-2 on the restart with 16 to go. The immovable object versus smoke. Who's going to win? The two match each other lap after lap, with Tony rolling the center and Newman beating him on corner exit. Heading into turn three, Tony sends it and slides up the track. 12 to go, and again, Tony tries into turn three. It sticks more, but Newman uses his exit speed and holds him at bay again. Lap after lap, Tony tries to find places where Ryan is weak and finally finds his opportunity, sliding it into turn three and completing the pass with eight to go. Newman quickly regroups and assesses the situation, and now he flips it on Tony. Full attack goes Newman on Stewart, using Tony's tactics against him. Six laps left now for the Boilermaker, and he's going to give him a touch with five to go, and then sends it side by side trying to get the 20 car. He backs off, realizing it wasn't the right opportunity, and collects himself for one last charge. Biffle, meanwhile, has somehow got into the third spot. And with the indication of two to go, two to go. Newman Stewart pours it on. Newman. Kenseth still holding off Biffle. Wallace and Newman's taking a look. Up beside Stewart. This is for the lead inside of two to go. Wow. 
Watch how hard Newman drives it into three here. Watch how hard Stewart drives it into three. <laughs> Sliding. Oh, they make contact. Oh, here we go. Newman's in front, but Tony's trying to come back on the inside. Can't do it. White flag, last lap. That was a great move. <laughs> but it's not over yet. There's still a half a mile to go. Stewart is flying that car right now. He is driving for everything he's got, but... Looks like it is over. Be, yep. I don't think he's going to be close enough to even make a move on him. Has one more chance down in three and four. That's where Ryan Newman has been so good. Newman off the four. The chase begins in New Hampshire and Ryan Newman wins. In an absolute barn burner to the finish, Ryan Newman wins and Tony Stewart will have to settle for second. In the end, Kenseth does get third over Biffle. And Wallace, Martin, and Johnson all get respectable top tens. Mayfield has to settle for a disappointing 16th and Edwards 19th. Kurt Busch is able to recover to a mediocre 35th place finish. And will have to have a borderline flawless nine consecutive races if he's going to repeat. One race down and Tony Stewart leads to points. But anything can happen in the realm of Miles the Monster. On a sunny fall day in Delaware, the Cup Series circuit takes to the high banked concrete mile for the second race of the chase. Ryan Newman sits on the pole for the sixth time in 2005, with the next closest chaser being Johnson and Wallace, fifth and sixth. Mark Martin sits seventh behind them and Kurt Busch is tenth. Kenseth and Mayfield sit eleventh and twelfth with Biffle in eighteenth. And to find Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart, you have to go all the way back to row sixteen where they will start outside the top thirty at the Monster Mile. With all 10 chasers still high on promise for their title hopes, the field takes the green. Race in the chase for the next Cup. Glad you're along for the ride. Sun shining, green flag about to fly on TNT. Newman gets the lead early on and collects five bonus points. Kurt Busch and Matt Kenseth race hard behind Newman who begins to pull away. Johnson, meanwhile, has worked up to third place and said that when he walked into the garage on Sunday, he had butterflies about the race, which anytime he has that feeling, he wins. Edwards has now worked up to 27th and Mayfield wants 10th from Kenseth. Eventually, the first caution comes out for a crash Stanton Barrett. He throws a ton of debris onto the track, extending the length of the yellow, and the race restarts finally on lap 18. Johnson and Jr. race hard for the second place position, and Johnson finally gets him. And as soon as he does, Junior slows down on the backstretch. His brakes have failed, and he has to pit going multiple laps down. Chasers Kurt Busch and Rusty Wallace race hard for 6th, and the two chasers who started in the back are now 26th and 28th. Kurt Busch, meanwhile, is on rails and racing towards the front. His fellow title contender from last year, Jimmy Johnson, is also gaining speed, closing in and passing Newman swiftly. He gets 5 bonus points and begins to build his lead. And as the run goes on, the chasers shuffle throughout the top 10, with a majority of them either working towards the front or holding steady. The one who isn't working towards the front is Tony Stewart. He's still in 30th. He is complaining of something wrong with the front end of the car. And now the pole sitter has plummeted to the 8th place position, also struggling with the handling of his car. Finally, on lap 69, a caution comes out for Mike Bliss and the field pits. All teams make varying chassis adjustments, and Biffle beats Johnson off the pit lane. The race restarts on lap 74 with Johnson quickly attacking, and eventually regaining the lead. Kurt Busch has moved to the fourth spot, applying the pressure to Kane in third, and eventually Casey gives way. Kurt then catches Biffle for second, and passes him as well. As Kurt's steady march to the front progresses, the battle for 32nd is hotly contested between Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon. With the way it runs right now, Tony has plummeted to 7th in standings, 83 points behind new points leader Greg Biffle. And the leader of the race, Jimmy Johnson, has now been caught by Kurt Busch, who is looking for his 5 bonus points. As those two battle, they approach the ailing 34th place Stewart and lap him. But by a grace of entertainment, a debris caution. And now Tony Stewart is the lucky dog. Everybody pits and Kurt Busch wins the race off the pit lane. He leads the field on the restart and immediately yards them. A chaser not mentioned today is a driver that has been facing issues on pit road, Rusty Wallace. 
After his pitting outside the box penalty in New Hampshire, he is gun shy of making the same mistake and has been pulling in the wrong way, making it hard for a good pit exit. A driver who has been having issues officiating wise is Robbie Gordon, who has now been black flagged for disobeying NASCAR's lineup orders. Ryan Newman is facing worsening handling conditions, fading back to 14th now, and Bush holds a slim but healthy lead over Jimmy Johnson. But he starts to close on Kurt once again, and soon he becomes the only non roush car in the top five. In the back, Tony's car is still awful, with Tony giving a pep talk keeping the team morale high. By lap 160, the battle for lead has morphed into a three-car fight, with Mark Martin adding his sixth car to the mix. As they've raced amongst one another, Tony falls behind them again one lap down. He quickly falls out of the lucky dog spot as well, whilst the leaders race. And before they can officially decide amongst one another, Scott Wimmer explodes a tire and brings out the yellow. Pit stops occur once more, and Johnson is the biggest loser to all the Roush cars. It is now a Roush 1, 2, 3, 4, and they charge the field back to the green. Biffle starts to run away as six laps down Dale Jr. races Kurt Busch. Stewart is finally able to start working towards the front and places himself 24th, the first car one lap down. Just past halfway, a caution comes out for LePage who spins out and destroys his car. Tony Stewart once again is the lucky dog and now everybody pits once more. Tire strategy goes haywire with Elliott Sadler winning the race off pit lane and the race restarts with lap traffic wreaking havoc on everybody but Elliott Sadler. He gives him the ability to put some space in between the people on fresh tires. And Mayfield, who's another one on a varying tire strategy, is fading fast back to fifth place. Just as things seem to settle in, Matt Kenseth has a flat tire. He comes down the pit lane under green, and just like at New Hampshire, Kenseth needs to overcome adversity. He reports that he hit a six foot long piece of metal, and he has fallen the ninth in standings. Back at the front, Kurt Busch finally catches Sadler and gets the lead, and Kenseth is now on full attack trying to catch the lucky dog in case of a caution. Over the next 40 laps, Matt tries to make up a half a lap on Travis Quapple before a caution finally comes out for debris on the front stretch. He's unable to get the lucky dog and everybody pits once more. Kurt holds the lead off the pit lane, and Tony's team again makes a wave of adjustments on the stop as one last ditch effort to try and make the car better. The race restarts with about 125 to go. Kenseth tries to chase down Casey Kane for Lucky Dog before another caution will come out, but is unable to as Robbie Gordon expires his engine and Kane gets it over Kenseth. The race restarts again and Matt slots in line with his lead lap teammates, hoping for another yellow. The misfortune of three is the luck of the 17, as a crash gives Matt the gift of a Lucky Dog. Stewart was able to evade it and Casey Kane puts together a sensational wreck avoidance. The race restarts again and now Stewart has cracked the top 15 along with Carl Edwards. Biffle moves high and slips back three spots saying his car is the worst it's been all race. He then realizes it's not the handling of the car. He's got a tire going down. He is plummeting through the field. And unlike Kenseth's foray, he doesn't even have 100 laps to make it up. At the front, Martin and Kurt fight for the lead. And Mark uses the 78 car as a pick. But then Kurt gets him right back. Those five points though Mark got has gotten him the points lead now. But Johnson has his car come to life. By 63 to go, he gets Kurt and sets his sails to pull away. Even though things may seem set in stone, the final cycle of stops are still ahead with about 30 laps left. Kurt wants the undercut and pits before anyone else can. But before we can hit green flag cycles... No And he has blown a right front tire, it looks like, and made contact with the wall. Talk about the 17 car. No yeah. caution yet, and here it comes out. For the second consecutive year, Matt Kenseth has used up his mulligan at Dover. This time a blown tire, and now Kurt Busch is in deep trouble. He is trapped a lap down, and will have to search for the lucky dog. The leaders pit, and everybody takes four except one, Mark Martin. They realign the field, and Kurt Busch is one lap down and leads them to green with 25 to go. Kurt is smart on the restart and quickly lets the lead battle by, riding right behind them hoping for a caution. Johnson works on Martin quickly and gets him. The 48 starts to leg it a little bit and then Kurt Busch pits again. He's got a flat tire and he hits the pit entry with an incredible pace. Kurt marks yet another instant of over the last 50 laps Roush completely collapsing. And with Mark Martin losing second place to Kyle Busch, it's now a Hendrick 1-2 at the front. Kurt Busch has fallen the 23rd. 
and gets locked there when a debris caution comes out, grouping up the field once more. They clean up the track and restart now with 11 laps to go, and Kyle Busch plays nice with his teammate Jimmy Johnson. They race throughout the top 10, with Kyle Petty in 7th racing chaser Jeremy Mayfield. And just when you think the race might close out... Oh! Nemechek crashes off turn 4! Down the front stretch, caution is out! We're going to a green white checkered. The field will be single filed out, and Johnson will lead them to the green flag. Johnson hits the gas, and Kyle is right there. The teammates play nice, and even though Kyle applies the pressure, Jimmy Johnson wins with teammate Bush in second. Rusty Wallace gets third, and Mark Martin fourth, and Ryan Newman somehow gets a fifth place through this entire day. Jeremy Mayfield is seventh, Carl Edwards gets ninth, Greg Biffle fights back to 13th, and Tony Stewart wrestles an 18th place finish. 23rd is Kurt Busch, and Matt Kenseth rounds out Chasers in 35th. With two races down, the reigning champion has had two terrible races, and the frustration is obvious. While there's still eight races left, Kurt and many others have plenty of time to make up the points, but any slip-ups from here could be catastrophic, and the track they go to next is the last thing you want to bank on for good luck. Two races in, and Chaser's hopes ride on the wild card that is Talladega. A non-Chaser front row with both the H drivers will lead the field to the start, as the highest Chaser is Newman, starting right behind them. Tony Stewart starts alongside his New Hampshire finished friend, and all the Chasers sprinkle the field back to Rusty Walls who starts the other front. Tony goes for the lead and gets it, gaining the five bonus points. And they already work to three wide as Johnson and Kenseth work near the front. Rusty running his final plate race is marching towards the front, up the middle, three wide. They dice it up for the lead and Tony gets pushed low and immediately lifts to prevent a yellow line penalty. The field now works four wide with the situation and the front sorts single file to try and break away from the field. The attempt is futile, however, and they are back at it for the lead. Soon Johnson goes high trying to make moves to also collect himself 5 bonus points. And they go 3 wide for the lead and McMurray slips out front. Kurt Busch is hanging out in the rear of the field, hoping for a disaster in the front. And on lap 19... The they may have some slight cosmetic damage with the crash! Trouble in turn 1! Oh! Car on its roof! Michael, Michael Waltrip! Mark Martin is in it! What are the championship contenders? Elliot Sadler, the Polson on 38 yeah, heavy damage. That's Mark Martin's car right there, as you couldn't really tell. Mark Martin is out of the race, Johnson is heavily damaged, and Michael Waltrip flipped over. Mark Martin, bitter and furious with the situation, puts out a soundbite pertaining to Talladega Racing for the ages. And, and fortunately, Mark Martin seems to be happy too. Uh, you're glad you survived that one. What was your view of that? Uh, somebody probably spun the 38 out, uh, probably uh, about all I saw. 38 spun, and uh, I, wanted, I just want to say one thing. The fans are the only one that can do anything about this. No one else can. The drivers can't. The owners can't. Um, and NASCAR's not going to do anything about it. So, you know, uh, I doubt if the fans can either, but they can sure try. Uh, I know that uh, it's exciting racing to watch, but golly, we didn't even, I didn't even get a sweat worked up. Uh, you know, and you just can't go against God's will. Uh, I'd have a championship by now if it was God's will. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm okay. And uh, we'll finish this one off, and we'll uh, worry about next year next year. What would you do to fix it? And, and surely you don't think the championship is over at this point, Mark? Sure would have been a lot easier if I'd have finished in the top ten today. Uh, you know, the only thing they can do really is take the banks out of these places, and then it wouldn't be as exciting for the fans. And so that's why that's why it's never going to happen. But when you have 230 mile an hour race cars running around at 185. That's, this is what you're going to get. I don't care. The drivers can't control it. You can say they can, but we don't, we don't really have control over the situation, and we can't get anything done. And, uh, you know, the race cars today have outgrown these racetracks. They're 230-mile-an-hour vehicles, and, you know, it's like uh, riding around out there uh, kitty cars, you know, at, at 185. 
Some very outspoken comments from Mark Martin, Matt. Johnson has the blame for the crash placed on him squarely. And this is now the second time that he has been a factor in starting a big one at Dega in 2005. The field pits and the majority of them take two tires with Kenseth leading them to the green on lap 28. Tony and Kenseth fight for the head position with Stewart fading. And Tony McMurray avoided near disaster as both them and Kyle Busch saved the field from more calamity. Johnson, meanwhile, has made five pit stops trying desperately to repair his car. Fans cheer as they watch the destroyed 48 drive on and off the pit road, and teammates Brian Vickers and Jeff Gordon have dropped out of the pack to help draft him up to speed to keep him with the field. Before they can even try, Johnson blows a tire and scatters debris everywhere, bringing out another caution. People come in and almost everybody takes fuel only. The race restarts again on lap 38 with Kurt Busch now leading, gaining five bonus points. And through the shuffling, Rusty Wallace gets pushed out of line and fades back to brother Mike Wallace running the four car. McMurray gets the lead at the front as Tony begins to complain of overheating issues with his only remedy being in the lead. He goes for it, trying to get McMurray and clears, but now the temps won't come back down. He's going to need a caution and gets lucky when Mike Bliss spins off a turn two. Bliss lost it because of a blown rear tire and everybody pits. Tony has trouble on a stop and the race restarts again on lap 61. Johnson restarts third with heavy aero damage and gets mauled because of it. Vickers leads the field, but McMurray doesn't wait to grab it back from him. The aggression keeps climbing until... Because NASCAR controls the shocks here, but we expect to see a new rule before we race... Oh, trouble! multi car in front of the field. Oh, and Scott Riggs on his roof. Oh, Riggs! Man, there's been a lot of cars getting on their roof lately. Riggs destroys his automobile, and now even more cars are out. Johnson is involved again and pretty much guarantees this is his mulligan. The wreck started with a bad bump from Newman to Mears, and now chasers Greg Biffle and Rusty Wallace are destroyed. Greg, infuriated by the situation, voices his displeasure with Newman. Four of the ten chasers have now sustained serious damage, and the race isn't even halfway. McMurray leads the field green, and now rookie Truex rides second. Through all the mayhem now, only one chaser is even in the top 10, Kurt Busch. From the verge of elimination to being back in it, the chase through three races has been a roller coaster ride for him, and Kenseth soon makes his way back towards the front, but another caution for Kyle Busch brings the yellow back out. He also lost a rear tire, and the field pits once more. Mayfield already in the back stays out the lead lap to give him five bonus points, and comes in a lap later. After that, the race restarts again with Kevin Harvick leaving. As the field comes back up to speed, rain starts to get reported around the track. And now the intensity really starts to ramp up once more. Kenseth, with 10 laps before halfway, takes the lead, and his teammate follows. As the points trickle out, Newman, ironically after the crash he caused, has a 50-point lead over the cars involved in the incident, and his teammate holds second in standings over Tony. Newman soon slots third, and the top three are chasers. Biffle is done with repairs and back on track finally, and has already gained up to the 29th position. Just as the race might seem to find a rhythm, Kurt Busch cuts a tire and touches the wall. Caution comes out, and once again, Kurt is snake-bitten. This time, however, he has time to recover, and the damage isn't that bad. Everyone comes down, and Newman during a stop stalls the car. With the race restarting halfway, half of the chasers now sustain damage, and Ricky Rudd is the leader over Casey Kane. Kurt rides 25th, now in full recovery, and Johnson has gotten back on track in 35th. Newman, after a stall, has his points lead cut to 34 over Stewart, and now Brian Vickers gets the lead from Rudd. His lead doesn't last, however, as Newman takes the lead, stringing the field back out. The pack has broken into two groups now, and things may look to finally calm down, until a caution for debris, which groups everybody back together. They all pit again, and McMurray and Stewart get the lead, with the two tire stops. The race restarts with 76 to go, and Kenseth immediately goes on attack against McMurray. Stewart takes advantage of a shove from Ricky Rudd and flies to the lead. The pack still races tight behind him as Tony puts four car lanes between him and the storm. Eventually, the front of the pack gets back to single file, and the intensity may have finally dropped off. Until another debris caution comes out with about 60 laps to go. They all come in again, with the majority taking two tires. Tony holds the lead on the pit lane and the race restarts and Kenseth tries to pass Tony with Newman. 
Their attempts are futile as Tony comes back to the lead and closes on the five lap bonus for most laps led. Meanwhile, Kurt Busch has found his way back to ninth and has completely erased the blown tire problems. The field calms down again and negotiations are happening for last stops of the day. The entire field has single filed out and five chasers are somehow following the top 10. Pit stops begin with roughly 30 laps to go. And as Harvick leads the first group, JL Jarrett is the next in, and most take just two tires and gas. Soon Newman and Biffle pit, and Biffle takes a swipe at Newman, sending a message about what happened earlier. Finally, the leaders come in with 27 to go, and McMurray almost rear ends Stewart on entry. The 17 is in with them as Robbie Riser had to negotiate like it was the Cuban Missile Crisis to get Matt on the same plan as the head pack. Biffle gets a black flag for his incident with Newman, and after stops, the top four are separated from the rest. Edwards through the cycle did lead a lap, gaining him five bonus points, and now, by the pace the groups of cars are going at, they will eventually all collect back together by race finish. Truex has an engine let go with 18 laps left, and with runs collecting, Kenseth tries to block them and gets shuffled out. Marlon moves to help, and now the pack is fanned out. With 12 laps to go, McMurray goes for the lead and gets way ahead. Stewart comes down and doors Kenseth, and Edwards has a moment. Kurt Busch is practically driving through Tony, and with 10 to go, they weave through traffic. Stewart makes a move with Dale Jarrett, charging past Carl Edwards. And through more traffic, Newman and Kenseth make daredevil passes. Newman submits to Kenseth, and Stewart follows through, then immediately steps under. Newman slots back and picks up Kenseth to push. And now Brian Vickers is here, and almost destroys Stewart and Jarrett. They somehow single file out from all this. And with five to go, Vickers now goes for more. Kenseth and Tony betray Brian, and Matt goes for it through four on the trioval. With four to go, it looks like it's setting up to be a hell of a finish until Schrader blows a tire and destroys his car. We are going to a green-white checkered finish. Kenseth sits in the lead with two to go, and the green comes back out. He throws a block, and Stewart goes under Ryan Newman. Dale Jarrett goes with him. To follow through, and Newman now gets a push from McMurray. Kenza throws another block, and now McMurray goes under Tony. Jarrett pushes the 20 again, and now the top two are by themselves. The white flag is out, and Tony has a run. He goes to the outside and gets there, and then Dale Jarrett goes higher. They are side by side down the backstretch, and Kenza looks to go three wide until. We stay green. Now the caution is out. Race is over. The fate of the finish is up to when they press the button. Dale Jarrett is announced the winner of the race. The rest of the top five are all chasers, and Bush and Mayfield somehow get eighth and 14th. Dale Jarrett has an emotional victory as the crowd loses it. As Jarrett celebrates on the front stretch, another man is still trying to finish the race. Parrott is back with him. Remember that just happened a few weeks ago when they got back together. Todd Parrott again on the box for Dale Jarrett. I don't know who they're cheering for right now. The 45 or the... I think Kyle's trying to cross the start-finish line, don't you think? Yeah, I believe he is. He I wants to finish. He's going to do it. There it is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Petty does it and finishes the race. With now three races down... All 10 chasers still stand, but Newman and Stewart have separated from the rest. The dominant Rouseketeers seem to be in trouble. They make up five of the six bottom spots and points, but now they go to a track that might be great for them, Kansas. While Kansas may seem normal, every year provides a crazy twist in the title that eliminates someone from contention. This year, Matt Kenseth sits on the pole, and the points leader, Newman, will have to come from the rear. With a much sunnier race than last year, we go green. The green flag is out on NBC. Kenseth gets a good start and grabs five bonus points. Gordon rides second, waiting for a slip-up. Stewart rides eighth, racing Sterling Marlin. And Rusty Wallace, who started 33rd, is already up to 23rd. 
His teammate Newmanhaver can't even break into the top 40, and he's struggling with an incredibly tight car. The race rides calm until Brandon Ash goes around bringing out the first yellow. The incident seems minor until it's noticed that Newman got involved, getting surmountable damage. The points leader is already in trouble, but has plenty of time to make it up at least. The field pits with some strategy play, putting Mark Martin second on the restart. Sadler, who stayed out, gets filed back by Roush cars, who show their muscle early. Newman's team, meanwhile, is having difficulty with repairs on his car, saying the fender is damaged in a way that makes it incredibly difficult to get it off the tire. Chasers make moves to the front, as Kurt Busch moves up to fourth. Rusty Wallace has worked his way back to the 20s, as he fell far back again on pit stops due to the car falling off the jack. A caution for the Brie interrupts the green flag run, and all 43 cars pit. The Killer Bees win the race off the pit road, and Kenseth leads on the lap 45 restart. Kurt Busch, however, is pushing, wanting to lead a lap. Stewart is also there in third, preventing Roush from playing any teammate games. Biffle gets him, and now Newman crawls back up to 31st. Despite the situation, the 12 team is in a really good mood, cracking jokes on the radio. At the front of the field, Kurt is working the rim, trying to chase down Matt. Biffle, however, catches Kurt and gets him using the top lane. Biffle is on rails now and catches Matt, making quick work of him getting the lead. Kurt soon catches Matt and gets second from the former leader. Matt is fading as Tony and Mark catch up to him, but attention quickly turns to Kurt Busch, who's making an unscheduled stop. There's something wrong with his tires, he says, and for the fourth straight race, Kurt will have to overcome adversity in a big way if he wants to keep his championship alive. Kenseth is now having issues falling to ninth, and complaining of a massive vibration. They are begging for a debris caution to not have to pit under green, and are pleading that there's an entire fender sitting on the front stretch. During this debacle, Ryan Newman gets lapped in 32nd place. And finally, there's a blessing for both. A caution for debris on the front stretch, and it's actually real debris. The problem for Newman, though, is he doesn't get the lucky dog, and Kurt is definitively trapped a lap down. The field pits and restarts on lap 99, with Tony having an atrocious restart. Kurt passes Biffle to put himself on the lead lap, and Newman rides behind him in the lucky dog spot. All they have to do is hope for a yellow, and Stuart Kirby blesses them with one. Kurt gets to come back around, and Newman gets the lucky dog. On the previous restart, the reason for Tony's poor start is discovered as the car might be losing electrical power. His volts are at 8, and he's told to save power in order to not need a battery change later in the race. The field regroups and restarts on lap 106, and Biffle holds the lead over Mayfield in second, and Stewart runs third with the possible ailing car. Tony attacks Mayfield and gets the runner-up spot, and the race doesn't stay green long as another yellow for Borisette brings the field down pit road once more. Mark Martin and Ken Schrader do an audible, taking two tires and come off one too. The field gets grouped up as a fire in the infield coats turn four with smoke, and Martin leads the field to the green. Mark yards everybody as they race hard in the traffic. Eventually, Stewart gets to second, and Mike Bliss is in fourth. Edwards is found seventh, and Rusty Wallace has finally cracked the top ten. Mark is loving his car out front, and Tony reports his volts are doing very good now. Biffle soon finds third, and is by far the fastest car on track. As the run wears on, Rusty Wallace passes Mayfield, and files him back to eighth. The 19 car is starting to struggle, and Johnson, meanwhile, has been quiet all day chasing down that 19 car. Newman is still struggling in 27th, not being able to do much with his car. Ryan then starts reporting that he's overheating, and now there's a terrible vibration. They pit with under 100 laps to go, and although they are in early, green flag stops are not far out. Johnson comes in with 90 to go, and has a mediocre stop, and then Mark Martin comes in four laps later with teammates Biffle and Bush. Stewart stays out to get five bonus points, then he comes in. Mayfield stops next with Edwards, and Rusty is one of the last guys to pit also getting himself five bonus points. Through the cycle, not much changes, and Mark still leads. Stewart has moved up to second now, and closing in on Mark Martin, thanks to Ryan Newman. Ryan is about to get lapped again, and he's refusing to be lapped by Mark. But finally, he prevails. Edwards now has worked up to fifth, and Kenseth sits sixth. Mayfield is really faded now, all the way back to 13th, and Biffle gets by Tony for second. Kurt Busch is mired back in the 17th place, stalled out there and not being able to make up any positions. His car is handling poorly, but is saved by a caution from Michael Waltrip's engine letting go. With roughly 50 laps left, this could very well be the last stops of the day, and everybody comes in. Everyone holds their spot except Brian Vickers, who takes two tires, 
and the race restarts at 46 to go. Jeff Burton races Mark Martin hard as a lap car, and they almost collide, but Burton gives away. They are racing hard throughout the pack, and in the middle of it is Bobby Labonte, who suddenly blows an engine and smacks the wall, bringing out the yellow. The race restarts again with 40 laps to go, and Biffle starts going for it. They are also racing hard outside the top 10, with Seb bouncing off the wall. Blocks are being thrown, and Kurt Busch is trying to take advantage. And back at the front, things are calmer, with 20 laps to go. Biffle starts to slowly reel in his teammate Mark Martin, and Stewart starts fading back to Edwards now, who's in fourth. And the fight is on for that spot. He can't hold off Carl and gets passed by the 99. Ten to go now, and it's five tenths between the leaders. Biffle is really trying to close up, but says the car is too loose now. Five laps to go, and Mark is really pushing to keep Biffle away. Two laps left, and Biffle just can't close enough. The white flag is out and the 10 car is slow on the front stretch. It doesn't matter though. Mark Martin has a turnaround week and wins at Kansas. Biffle gets second, Edwards third in a Roush 1-2-3. Stewart will still get fourth place as the alternator holds on, and Kenseth gets fifth. Johnson is sixth, Rusty Wallace is seventh, Mayfield 16th, and Ryan Newman 23rd. In 14th is Kurt Busch, and even though he recovered moderately well, he finished 14th in the best race for all 10 chasers ever. All last year, Kurt avoided disaster at some points by mere inches. But now, misfortune and bad finishes have placed him last in the chase. And he becomes our first elimination from the second chase. No pre-race because the LSU game pushing late has this race going green right when the broadcast comes to it. They are flying on the new surface and Newman leads lap one, getting it from pole sitter Elliott Sadler. But the action screeches to a halt when Robbie Gordon loses a left to retire, bringing out the first caution. It gives everyone time to breathe and talk about the storylines coming into tonight's race. The 600 mile event here in the spring was marred by 22 cautions, the most in series history. Many attributed that to the track surface not being prepared properly. Unable to repave it in enough time for tonight's event, they ground the surface in hopes to make the issue less prevalent. But that, in effect, has made the tire wear incredibly excessive, as in the Bush race, blown tires were a norm after about a 15 lap run. Teams are terrified about tonight, and track promoter Humpy Wheeler has come out and said, bear with us, we will repave for 2006. So the drivers are stuck with this, and one of the most critical points of the year, with the factor that any moment a tire could fail and send you head on into a wall. On top of the tire problems, speeds are at a record high, 4 miles an hour faster than average than last year's speeds. Jimmy Johnson ran the Bush race and crashed horribly, and Tony Stewart totaled two cars here in testing, and Greg Biffle is scared to even push more than 10%. Johnson is starting in the back already and had to evade Gordon's retire issue and lines up again in last place on the restart. They go green on lap 8 and the race is tight in the narrow racing surface. They are going 200 miles an hour into turn 1, and by lap 18, Johnson has already made it up to 29th, and Rusty runs 27th. On top of the tire issues, teams are now reporting that there are suspension components that are possibly failing on these cars from the forces in the corners. Eventually, Sadler passes Newman for the lead, and Stewart falls through to 2nd. Newman realizes why he starts to slow and the handling of the car is going away. He has a tire going down. He pits to try and save his car, and then NASCAR calls out to the team saying a copy will be at lap 30. Tony gets the lead before that and grabs 5 bonus points. Under the caution, everybody pits. Newman will be the lucky dog, and Sadler gets by Stewart on the pit lane. The race restarts on lap 36, and now lap cars on the bottom make the racing really sketchy. Joe Nemechek reports blisters on his tires, and Gordon racing hard in traffic slaps the wall. Instead of dealing with it, Jeff Gordon just pulls it behind the wall to repair it. And by lap 55, 
Jimmy Johnson has gotten the 13th, and Edwards, Wallace, Newman, and Mayfield are all back outside the top 20. Tony chases down Sadler and gets the lead back on lap 60. And before we can go any further, Dale Jr. detonates a right front in the turn one. It has begun. The tire failures are coming. Greg Pebble got extremely lucky, as he was just outside of Jr. the lap prior, and if he had stayed out there racing with him, he would have been more than likely collected into that crash. Meanwhile, his teammate isn't so lucky. Under pacing, Matt Kenseth has his right front let go and shreds the fender. The first chaser has had issues. As the pit lane opens up, everyone pits but Tony Stewart. Tony was never told pit lane opened, and now has to come in the next lap losing all of his track position. Newman during his stop removes equipment and gets put to the rear with Tony. And the race restarts again with Sadler leading on lap 68. Biffle fires the second, and the team reports Biffle had blistered his tires on every set he's run so far. And he has this to say to them on the radio. It runs over something on the racetrack, like sealer or whatever. It'll just take off. The nose will just take off like I got a flat, like a chunk come out of the tire, and I got a flat. I don't understand. Guys, we're, we're not racing for win right here. We're racing to finish. That's it. Just whatever we can do to survive tonight. That's all we're here for. Because a lot of guys aren't going to get to finish. Stewart, meanwhile, is pushing hard through lap traffic, not worried at all about tires. Kenseth, meanwhile, has to pit again for another flat tire. The team didn't clearance the front fender enough, and now he's gone multiple laps down. By lap 97, Johnson has worked to the top five, and we now have hit the danger zone in tires. As predictable as a sunrise, Bobby Hamilton Jr. slams the fence, and everybody's ready to pit again. They send them down with Hamilton's wrecked car still in the pit lane, and he ducks off quickly, Everything goes back to routine. Biffle, who had gotten the lead during the previous run, holds it on the pit lane and leads the field to the green. They report for the third time he had blistered his tires, and Johnson botches the restart. And now he reports he's having the same issue Stewart had at Kansas. Mark Martin, meanwhile, is not happy with the traffic on pit road. Way. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to pass this zero one. 40 times, I guess. On lap 109, Carl Edwards has a moment as he and crew chief Bob Osborne are on full survival mode, not expecting many cars to finish this race. Jeremy Mayfield is the furthest back of the chasers, struggling with the vibration of the drivetrain in the car the entire weekend, and they have not known what the issue has been. By the time Tony gets back to the top 10, the tire clock expires, and this time it claims Sterling Marlin. The field comes in and Sadler holds his lead. Newman gains track position for the restart, taking two tires, as Matt Borland realizes that while the right tire wear is tremendous, the left side barely wears. During this run, Kyle Busch is showing incredible speed, and blows past Elliott Sadler. He starts to pull away and the broadcast goes to commercial. Even with Kyle Busch pushing at what he said was only 90% effort, the tires will smite you down. Everybody pits, and Mears now leads, taking only two tires. The race restarts and Sadler spins the tires, and he's being attacked now by Tony and Biffle, which leads to a close call. Goodyear, meanwhile, has done some research, and apparently, if you heat cycle the tires, they are much more durable than what they originally were before. Jeff Gordon has now been designated to go out and hot lap with sets of tires to heat cycle them so that Jimmy Johnson can use them, and Stewart comes under mirrors and gets the lead away from him. Newman starts reporting a vibration, but he gets lucky with Harvick hitting the threshold first. The tires can't even go 17 laps now, apparently, and everybody is in once more. Mark Martin takes two tires along with Rusty, and Johnson reports that the alternate issues on the restart are now gone. Stewart still leads over Sadler on the restart, and apparently NASCAR is in talks to mandate a certain tire pressure. The two teams that are under their soon-to-be mandate is Joe Nemechek and Tony Stewart. NASCAR has now decided to throw a comp caution lap 200, and now everybody has to come in to meet the pressure mandate. Tony holds his lead on the pit lane, and Biffle is furious about the timing of the yellow. The race restarts on lap 207, and Sadler wants to lead. They race hard, and then Rusty comes down the pit. He has an apparent flat rear tire, and they change it now, and he gets nabbed for speeding. This very well could be Rusty's mulligan. As long as nothing happens to Stewart, Rusty, Kenza, Alan, and Mayfield. Yeah, the air pressure gauge on the right rear tire, it was losing oh! air. Stewart. Tony Stewart into the wall. Cuts a right rear tire. He blew a right rear tire going into turn three. The championship leader has brought out the caution at Charlotte. The tires strike again. Tony's rear end is totaled, 
and he is now in full recovery mode. The field pits again, and now Mark takes two tires, along with Johnson. Tony's team is working fast to repair his car, trying to save what's left of his points lead. It is concluded that Tony ran over something, and that it was not due to excessive wear. Many drivers pit now, but the top nine stay on track. Michael Waltrip leads them as the field goes back green, and Sadler is on it fast and quickly takes it away from Waltrip. Tony, meanwhile, has tried to make laps, but the car's handling is so bad that he'll have to take it behind the wall. Right as he does so, David Shermie obliterates his car, and once again, everybody comes in the pit. Newman now has the lead, and Jimmy Johnson is once again in the back of the field due to making two stops. He did so because of a tire going flat from the first stop under caution. He must have ran something over from the crash, and the field once again goes back green, and the intensity is now getting higher. Rusty Wallace has a moment nearly avoiding disaster, and then Deja Vu strikes Sadler. This time, two more cars are involved. Mike Bliss gets crashed after Scott Riggs' Arca breaks it into the accident. NASCAR realizes that there's too much debris in 3 and 4, and to continue racing, they have to red flag the event to clean the track surface. The red takes roughly 15 minutes, and once lifted, Sadler's team can finally try to repair the car. With still 80 to go, the standings are the closest we may ever see them at this point in the chase. Everybody now seems to be in it. And under this extended yellow, Johnson's team takes time to replace the batteries and fix whatever electrical gremlins that there are to finish this race. The race restarts with 75 to go, and Newman tries desperately to hold off Michael Waltrip. He can't, and now Kane takes second. Newman gets in a sketchy situation and saves his car before yet another caution. Scott Riggs has now finished off his car. The field pits and Rusty Wallace gets the lucky dog. Biffle takes two tires, and once again the top nine did not pit. Newman and Kane are the leaders, and they restart again on lap 276. Waltrip is in the mid-pack, trying to get to the front, and has disaster strike. Along with the crash, Robbie Gordon ironically has his engine let go at the same exact time of the accident. And instead of going around the track, he cuts it straight across the infield grass and into the garage area. Edwards does a wreck of wind similar to what his teammate did a year ago, and Michael Waltrip's team is infuriated with NASCAR. They had the pit and go back there from the lead to change the tire pressures to NASCAR standards, and they paid for it. Ironically, Michael says, the crash was caused by him blowing a rear tire, and Rusty again takes the lucky dog. Kane still holds the lead with 48 to go, and Newman tries to take the lead again, but Kane holds him off. Mark Martin tries to get third from Mears, and Biffle requests if he can finally start to push. The answer is a solid no. Rusty, who has finally worked back to the lead lap, has to pit again for a four-tire stop under green for more tire issues, again going down laps. Kurt Busch now charges through the top 10 and gets to the rear end of Kane for the lead. Instead of pushing, he backs off and saves his tires, and it pays off. Alan? Yeah, Bill, not a lot on the radio. Whoop, got one slow. That's Kane. a nine car, the, Casey the leader. Kane. He's got, sure, the right front tire down. Caution is out, Dave. Two years in a row, Kane has now blown a tire from the lead in this race, and the caution is out again. This time, he miraculously saves his car from destruction, and many teams come in for what would be their last stop of the night. Rusty again gets the lucky dog and is back on the lead lap, and the top five now through strategy is Ricky Rudd, Joe Nemechek, Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, and Jeremy Mayfield. With 22 to go, the race goes back green, and the 0-4 finish of the Kansas race battle for the lead. All of a sudden, though, Rudd slows and Johnson is now smoking. He has an enormous front fender rub, and the replay shows that he made contact with Rudd. The rub persists, and now rookie Denny Hamlin is in third. Kurt Busch on four tires is Superman through traffic, and Johnson has now thrown care aside, and is going to push for the win with the fender rub. He sets his fastest lap of the race and gets to the bumper of Joe. Fifteen laps to go, he sends it on Joe, and they race side by side. They keep going at it, and Kurt Busch now from third is with him. Thirteen laps left and Johnson has to back off. Kurt Busch applies pressure now. 10 laps to go now, and they are all still there. Johnson sends it deep in the one and clears finally. Eight laps left, and now Chad Knauss is pleading with Jimmy to save everything he can, and Kurt now gets Joe and sets his sights on Johnson. He has five laps left to catch him. Biffle is there for third now on Joe, and right as they start the fight, caution. Rusty Wallace is around on the back stretch. He was racing with Vickers, which led to him losing it under him. The car was fine until the right rear shredded and came apart, going back around the track. And now we're going to a green-white checkered finish. Kurt and Jimmy battle for the lead, with Kurt rim-riding it through two. He is on Johnson's bumper, heading into turn three, 
and Jimmy ships the mail into the corner, with sparks flying through the bumps. He puts a ton of distance on Kurt, and the white flag is out, and Jimmy Johnson with his impressive 3-4 and four, holds off Kurt and wins in Charlotte. The long, crazy night in Charlotte is over. Nearly four and a half hours of seat time and surprisingly no chase eliminations. Or chase drivers even DNFing. Officially halfway through the chase. And the battle for the title is a tie at the top of the standings. As the chase enters its second half, many drivers look at Martinsville as opportunity. Drivers like Rusty Walls, Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, and Mark Martin come here with optimism, knowing it's one of their best tracks. This race also marks the one-year anniversary of the tragedy that occurred in the first chase. This race carries a special meaning for Hendrick, and a win might help them in more ways than just points. Tony Stewart is on the pole, and with weather polar opposite of a year ago, the race goes green. out on top. Tony Stewart brings him down, waiting for the green flag. Glad you're along for the ride on NBC. Tony is in a unique silver car, and he leads lap one, gaining his five bonus points. Mark Martin fights from the rear as a wreck in practice placed him there. Ricky Rudd passes Stewart for the lead on lap two, and Rusty wants second. Eventually, Tony gets him back, and Rusty can't get Rudd. They start to pull away and a caution comes out early. Mike Wallace gets spun by Mark Martin who was close to getting lapped and was desperate to stay away from the leader. The race restarts with Michael Waltrip leading after pit stops and he immediately gets passed. He drops quickly through the field as Tony tries to pull away again but is stumped by a caution from Michael Waltrip having a flat tire. His flat is from Mike Wallace getting dumped into him and the lucky dog on the caution is Greg Biffle who is really struggling at Martinsville today. People pit on lap 91 and Matt Kenseth leads on the restart. He and Brian Vickers along with teammate Mark Martin stayed out to try and get track position and now Mark is paying for it the worst. Mark is saved quickly though by another caution for debris and the race restarts quickly again. Stewart quickly cuts under Vickers and now goes under Kenseth. Kenseth can't even fight and again Tony takes a strong lead. Meanwhile, old rivalries die hard as Rusty and Jeff race hard in the pack. As Ricky Rudd slips under Kenseth for second, a caution comes out for Brian Vickers, who blew up and dumped oil everywhere. Newman wins the race off pit lane, but Edwards, Kurt Busch, and Schrader lead on the restart. The race restarts on lap 133, and Edwards gets run high and falls back quickly. Stewart cuts through all of them once again and gets the lead once more. Rusty attacks his teammate and then gets Schrader. As the race settles in, another caution for Mike Bliss getting turned by Scott Riggs. In turn, collecting Marlin and second place Riggs brings everyone down. Michael Waltrip again doesn't pit and leads once more, but he's passed nearly instantly. As Waltrip is getting filed back, Kurt Busch dumps him. Riggs and Edwards also goes around, but neither gets damage. The race restarts again, but another caution for Blaney slows the pace once more. Riggs no breaks it, and it leads to a longer cleanup. The race restarts on lap 215, and Roush cars are officially in trouble. Mark is 14th in falling back, Biffle is barely in the top 20, and there's only one Roush car in the top 10. Another caution comes out for Dale Jr. getting turned by Kevin Harvick, collecting the Yates cars. People pit again and Dave Blaney leads on the restart, from staying out on lap 247. It once again doesn't take long for Tony to get by for the lead. Rusty and Gordon soon work up to 2nd and 3rd and start fighting each other until another caution. Jeff Green blows a tire and everybody comes in again. Tony holds the lead and the race restarts on lap 296. It lasts about 10 seconds as Hermie Sadler stalls on the front stretch. They get him off the track and go back green with 200 laps to go. And Tony officially clinches the most laps led, and Johnson now has gotten to third chasing Rusty. Jimmy can't catch him before another caution for Elliott Sadler getting spun comes out, and the race restarts once again with Rusty racing Casey Kane hard to try and get by him. Wall starts to get upset before another caution for Jeff Green being spun slows the pace. Kenseth goes around as well, but keeps it going. The race restarts now with 184 to go, but Mears goes around shortly after bringing out another caution. This time everybody pits except Jeff Gordon, and he stays out and leads on the restart. The caution instantly comes back out for a spun Ricky Rudd, and they pace to about 148 to go now. Biffle, Martin, and Kenseth stay out and run behind Jeff in the top five. 
lap cars wreak havoc on Jeff on the restart, and Biffle gets through to gain 5 bonus points. Gordon quickly takes it back though, and another caution from Michael Waltrip off the bumper of Edwards brings the field back together once more. The race restarts with 130 to go, and Stewart has now pushed up to third. Stewart is racing hard with Biffle, and he tries to move him to get the spot. Biffle fades back fast, and eventually is to the 15th place. Johnson soon catches Tony, and wants the position. But there's a bigger issue in the back. Mayfield comes down pit lane and has a flat tire. Mayfield's flat tire has now put him multiple laps down, and at risk of losing touch in the championship. Another chaser in Carl Edwards also goes a lap down. And it doesn't stop there, as now Mark Martin has an issue. He gets lapped, and he's reporting he is having brake issues, but he is saved by a debris caution. That luck, however, is short-lived. His brakes are now on fire, and they are completely gone. He's going to have to go to the garage, and now lose even more spots. Meanwhile, pit stops start, with Jeff Gordon winning the race off. The race now restarts 52 to go through all the mayhem, and Johnson wants by his teammate. Gordon is struggling with lapping Biffle and can't find a way past. He finally goes under and clears, and now Johnson is there. He fights with Jimmy, now dragging Tony into the equation. Jimmy now clears, and Biffle inflicts the same pain on Tony. He is having none of it, and runs Biffle wide. Biffle sends it in on him, and Kane almost sends Biffle. Mark has finally made it back on track, now 31 laps down, and at the front, Johnson is requesting that Jeff let him by to get the 5 bonus points. With under 30 to go, Jeff is highly skeptical of the situation and says if they can get way far ahead of the 20, he will do it. Those conversations are shot down by a caution caused by Matt Kenseth getting spun by Kyle Busch and nobody pits and the restart comes with 19 to go. Everybody goes uniform until... This was Rusty's last shot at a title, his final opportunity to win one for the captain. But at one of his best tracks, running top five, he gets turned and eliminated from the second chase. With 15 to go, the race goes back green, and the top three clear traffic. Tony is digging hard on Johnson, and with 11 to go, he moves to 48. But Johnson will get another shot. Caution for Travis Quapple breaks the record at Martinsville, and the top three are lined up and ready for the restart. Three laps to go, and everyone sends it into the corner. Two laps left, and Tony is looking at Jeff, but he plays defense. They race hard, but Tony can't get Jeff. And he wins his first race with crew chief Steve Letart. Stewart is second, third is Johnson, and only Newman is the other chaser in the top 10. Roush had all four remaining chasers finish 12th or worse, but they are heading to their bread and butter. It's Halloween and the drama couldn't be any higher among the eight remaining chasers. NASCAR returns to Atlanta since an EF2 tornado slammed the racetrack, damaging the structures around the track. Atlanta since has done a great job to repair the facility, and for the sixth straight Atlanta race, Ryan Newman is on the pole. The spring race winner Carl Edwards is to his outside, and Mark Martin starts fourth fresh off his IROC title. He predicted victory in today's race. And with chasers dotted throughout the field, the we go green. And the in chase Atlanta. continues at Atlanta live on NBC. Already three wide, Elliot Sadler sends it to the lead. He shuffles Newman back to third, and Edwards soon goes by for the lead on lap three as Ryan continues to fall back. He complains of a crazy loose race car and gets saved by a caution. The 37 and 66 crash, collecting Rusty Wallace. If Rusty's title hopes weren't over yet, this pretty much seals it. The field pits except Elliott Sadler, who stays on track, and NASCAR warns the teams to not use the grass in the pit lane as runoff. The race restarts on lap 10, and Carl was loose working back to the front, but finally gets Sadler. Newman again quickly fades to the field, as he is not the only chaser struggling at the moment. Jimmy Johnson is in 17th and struggling to go forward. 
Mark Martin moves forward to the second spot and catches teammate Carl Edwards for the lead. He gets him, and now Stewart wants second. Dale Jr. is now there as well, and files Edwards back even further. As the run goes on, Carl's car comes back to him, and he moves to second, chasing down his teammate Mark again. Meanwhile, Jerry Mayfield has gone to the garage with transmission issues. Jeremy's season overall has been one of the most consistent, but over the last two weeks he has fallen to the bottom of the chase standings. With his mechanical problems at Atlanta, he is officially eliminated from the second chase. Back on track, Elliot Sadler pits under green for his stop, and a caution immediately comes out. NASCAR thought him locking up the tires coming onto the pit lane was him having an engine failure, and now he is caught a lap down. Everybody pits, and now Mark Martin gets a speeding penalty. The race restarts on lap 55, with Edwards and Stewart racing hard for the lead. Tony prevails and gets his five bonus points. Dale Jr., though, steals the lead away, and Carl Edwards pushes him back to third. Caution comes out for debris, and strategy shuffles the running order once more. Matt Kenseth gets a speeding penalty on his stop, and Junior leads on the restart. Edwards and Junior battle, and eventually he pulls away. Biffo, who early had a panic for a possible flat tire, has worked his way back up to 13th, and Martin is cracked back into the top 10. Eventually, Stewart fades to 7th, as Johnson struggles to 14th, fighting with McMurray. They both catch Ryan Newman, who continues to fall back to the 17th spot as Edwards catches Junior for the lead. The battle is interrupted though when Kurt Busch crashes for a flat rear tire, bringing everyone down the pit lane. Carl's team reports cording on his tires, and he restarts behind Junior with just under 200 to go. Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards race hard on the restart, with Kyle passing Carl, and Biffle is now fourth, and he passes his teammate. Outside the top 10, Newman and Johnson lead a pack of cars racing hard for position, and Kyle Busch eventually passes Junior. Biffle does go by for second, and before Edwards can pass Jr. for third, a caution for Reed Sorensen and Casey Kane bring the field in the pit lane once more. It's not everybody, though. Biffle gets the lead as the field reshuffles in strategy, and the race restarts on lap 139. Jr. flies through the other cars that stayed out and catches Biffle. He gets Greg, and now he is under attack from his teammates. Jeff Gordon is also in the middle of the Roush Armada, as the points leaders of Johnson and Stewart run 9th and 11th. Mark Martin eventually wins out in the battle and gets second. A caution though interrupts the racing as Martin Shirks Jr. slaps the wall and everybody pits. Ryan Newman stays out an extra lap to get five bonus points since he was the last car on the lead lap. Biffle has a situation on pit road which he runs Kyle Busch onto the grass. Instead of NASCAR penalizing Biffle, they penalize Kyle Busch and put him to the rear for going onto the grass. The race restarts at halfway and Jr. races Mark Martin. Edwards runs high, making up time on Kenza and gets him on the bottom. Johnson over the run works his way up to 7th and rides behind four Roush cars in the top five. A caution for debris brings everyone down the pit road again, and the restart comes on lap 195. Again, Junior pulls away and puts some distance on the field. Carl starts rim riding and carves through his teammates, and he starts chasing down Junior. He catches him, and now the two are going to go at it. They race hard for the position, and Mark Martin eventually catches them both. After about five laps, Dale bends the knee and lets him by. And the close battle on track now is for 7th between Johnson and Stewart. Those two race hard for position with Tony prevailing. And a caution comes out for Casey Mears and everybody now comes in with 100 to go. Mark Martin wins the race off and restarts in the lead with 93 laps left. And they race hard with Junior going for it along with Edwards. Carl gets Dale and Jeff Gordon passes the 8 as well. And Carl meanwhile is the fastest car on track and he catches Mark. He gets his teammate and starts flying on the top groove. 70 to go now, and Johnson has faded to 13th. With that poor run, Stewart has built his points lead to 40 plus points. And now Johnson's teammate Jeff Gordon moves up to 2nd. Jimmy clings on to the top 15 now, but he isn't the worst one off. Ryan Newman can't even stay in the top 20 as he goes a lap down, and Jimmy gets lapped finally with 44 to go. But he is saved by a debris caution, and that gives him the lucky dog. The debris is a real large piece of metal. Everybody comes down for what is possibly the last stops of the day, and Edwards holds the lead. The race restarts with 37 to go, and Kenseth goes for it from second. Carl tries to barely hold him off, and Matt claims five bonus points. 
Carl then clears and instantly pulls away. Newman in the back, trying to make something of nothing, slaps the wall and fades even further back. As the run wears on, Johnson still struggles, and Carl is gone from everybody. The race runs green home, and Carl wins his third race of the year and sweeps Atlanta. Mark Martin comes home third, Kenseth fifth, and Biffle seventh. Tony holds on the ninth, and Johnson gets 16th. In 23rd is Newman, who with his poor run is put in a tough situation for Texas. He's going to need to perform, or else it could be over. After an abysmal race at Atlanta, Newman again wins the pole, but he will have to go to the rear for crashing his car instead and will run a car from 2001 that they have plenty of confidence in. With him falling to the back, third place Matt Kenseth will move up to the pole. For the and championship lead them to the in 500 miles to chase the checkered flag in Texas, live on NBC. Kenseth establishes an early lead over Jeff Gordon and gains five bonus points. In the back of the field with Newman is last week's winner Carl Edwards, who has already begun weaving through traffic. Stewart is currently turning the fastest laps on track and catching the leaders. The first caution of the day comes out for debris and everybody pits. Almost everybody takes wedge adjustments and Kenseth holds the lead on the restart. Already Matt puts some distance on the field as Stewart and Martin run top five. Carl Edwards has now gotten to the top 15 and already erased his bad qualifying run. Biffle eventually catches Kenseth and gets the lead grabbing 5 bonus points. Biffle starts to build his own lead, but then trouble strikes. He reports a vibration to his crew, and believes that it's in the drivetrain. He hopes it's a tire, but regardless, it is persistently getting worse. He pits under green and hands the lead back to Matt, and they realize that the left rear was loose. The front four have now sorted out to all chasers. Kenseth in first, Stewart in second, Johnson third, and Mark Martin in fourth. Newman currently runs 29th and reports his car is incredibly slow, and he is fearful of going a lap down now. The front of the field, Stewart is now catching the 17 car, who are racing with heavy hearts for crew chief Robbie Reiser. His father is currently sick in the hospital, and Robbie was not at the track for the first time in Matt's career. When Robbie asked Matt what he should do on Friday and Saturday, Matt told him to go spend time with his father and that he would take care of it. Matt now is weaving through traffic and determined to win for Robbie. Meanwhile, on the 16th team... Matt Kenseth, Tony Stewart, Mark Martin, Jimmy Johnson, oh. and Dale and Jr. Whoa, 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 Biffle! Hasn't hit... Oh, there goes Bliss flying through! Man, I can't believe those guys didn't hit anything. Biffle started this wreck way back in three. Greg Biffle's show of driving prowess to the fans brings the caution out, and everybody comes in. The race restarts again on lap 87 with Kenseth pulling away, and Biffle is chasing Kevin LePage for the lucky dog. Tony, meanwhile, has his car come to him and starts stalking Matt for the lead. He rolls the bottom, trying to pass, but Kenseth holds steady. Lap after lap after lap, Tony stalks Matt, trying to find any mistake Matt makes and take advantage of it. The 17 is super loose, but he holds on and Tony fades about a second back, and he expresses some frustration. Meanwhile, Carl Edwards has now found the sixth spot, and is closing out fifth place Mark Martin. Newman has finally gotten the 22nd, saying the car is awful, with the handling being randomly loose and then randomly tight at some times. Casey Mears, meanwhile, shows some life and drives up to the fourth spot. By the time Mark Martin falls to the seventh place position, green flag pit stops begin. Junior starts them early, then Martin and Mears come in soon after. Edwards and Kenseth come in on lap 148, and Stewart stays out one extra lap to gain five bonus points. Johnson stays out two extra laps and also gains himself five bonus points. He then comes in, and on top of losing time on the undercut, his pit stop is dreadfully slow. He drops him back even further in the field, and after the cycle, Kenseth still holds the lead over Tony, and Mears now runs third. Casey all of a sudden passes Tony for second, and the 41 is showing immaculate speed. Biffle, meanwhile, has actually chased down Kenseth and is trying to race back his lost lap. As Biffle tries to get the lap, Casey Mears comes out of nowhere and challenges for the lead. He passes Matt on lap 165 and he drives away like a rocket ship. Edwards is also hooked up, passing Tony for third, 
and he catches Matt and passes him as well. Soon Carl is the fastest car on track, and Mir's racing with Biffle, trying to stay in the lead lap is costing him plenty of time. Through the battle, Biffle makes contact with Wilmer and has a sensational save, and then a caution for debris comes out, and Greg Biffle does not get the lucky dog. Everyone pits, and Mark Martin wins the race out the pit lane. He leads the field to the green on lap 189 and grabs his five bonus points. Mears has a moment, and Tony grabs a spot from him. And Carl does the same on teammate Matt Kenseth, who now reports he has a dead battery. Matt goes to his second battery, and as long as the race doesn't take three more hours, he's fine. Biffle, meanwhile, is trying to chase down Bobby Labonte for the lucky dog, and Edwards takes the lead from teammate Mark Martin. He finally grabs five bonus points, and now only Ryan Newman hasn't gotten the lap's lead bonus yet. As the run wears on, Stewart gets passed by Vickers, Johnson, and Denny Hamlin. Carl, meanwhile, is practically falling asleep at the front of the field, and he gets a wake-up call from Casey Mears. On the long run, Mears' car is on rails and flies past Carl. They close in on Ryan Newman, who continues his miserable day. But then Mears nearly junks it. Carl goes back by, and just when Newman has some time to spare... Deep over, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Took the air off the trouble. And this time the 12 car comes spinning down the front stretch. Caution is out. Newman has it pointed in the right direction. Newman as a lucky dog spins out, and nobody will get the free pass. Everybody comes in the pit yet again, and with the track completely in shade, the race restarts with 85 to go. Mark Martin, who won the race out the pit road, leads and pulls away from the battle for second between Casey Mears and Brian Vickers. Edwards, who had a poor stop, has gone by for third now, and with Mark leading, it puts the most laps led bonus in the hands of Matt Kenseth. Brian Vickers now shows speed and passes Mark for the lead, but Carl is even faster. He makes Brian's time at the front short-lived and passes him for the lead. Tony, meanwhile, has fought back up to the fourth place position, as Mark gets the runner-up spot from Brian. Mark Martin now works on reeling in Carl with 45 to go, and he gets there. Just as he's about to make a move... Caution is out. What is that, Biffle? Looks like Biffle again, yeah. Greg Biffle has spun out again. Biffle, when he spun, was in the lucky dog spot and will not be able to get his lap back. Everybody pits, and now Tony Stewart wins the race off the pit lane. Edwards loses four spots, and now the points leader takes the green with 39 to go. Stewart is able to pull away as lap traffic races Martin, and Carl bears down Vickers for fourth, and gets him. He then blows by for third, and now in front of him is a battle for the ages. Mark and Tony race hard as they push their cars to the limit. Mark gets Tony, but he crosses him over, and they stay side by side. The crowd cheers as two of the best duel. Mark struggles and backs off from Tony now, and he lets teammate Carl Edwards onto the 20 car. 26 to go, and Carl is coming. He goes to the inside and makes a miracle move taking the lead, and hits the afterburners. Mark now attacks Tony and makes contact, sending Tony back to Matt Kenseth. And the damage has made Tony's car awful as he drops like a rock through the field. He makes contact with Mears now, and he's in serious jeopardy, and then he is saved by a debris caution. And finally, Greg Biffle has the lucky dog. Now it turns to who will pit and who won't. Bob Osborne doesn't know what to do, and Carl gives him an ultimatum. Sixth or better on the restart, and he can win the race. It's official. He pits along with others, and Carl takes two. Tony is in as well, with Jimmy Johnson who takes four. Carl comes off the pit lane and lines up sixth. Mark stays out and leads the race on the restart with 11 to go. It's on. Three wide Tony and Carl duel with Carl clearing. He goes to the high side around lap cars, and with nine to go, Mark has left the field. And Trison says he needs to put two seconds on the field to ensure victory. And he's pushing as hard as he can. Eight to go. And he gets held up by Ryan Newman, who wants to be back on the lead lap. With seven to go, Carl gets by Wimmer. And the only cars that are left in between him and Mark are Matt Kenseth and Bobby Labonte. Six to go. Carl passes Bobby. And it's only Mark, Matt, and Carl left. Five to go now. And he sends the mail on his teammate Matt. He relents to him and the determined young gun now is going to chase down the veteran. Four to go, and he is pushing hard. The veteran versus the young gun, two oh, laps to left. And a good run right there, so this has got close the gap. Two to go. Three miles left in the race. Mark's going to the bottom, here goes Edwards to the top. For 
the lead. Less than two laps to go. Carl Edwards around Mark Martin. Baby, don't overdo it now. Clear, one back. Carl's mother watches from pit road. Last right lap. Flag. You're looking at it. Three back. Three back. Pretty impressive. The lead was what that is. Edwards going for two in a row. One last Sunday in Atlanta. Stewart is sixth, and that really will affect the championship standings as we head for Phoenix next week. Carl Edwards. You can take a break, it's yours. Oh, it it is here. Carl Edwards wins at Texas. Sixth or better was the ultimatum, and it played off. Carl Edwards comes home a winner in back-to-back -back weeks. Mark Martin gets second, Ken's a third, and Johnson is fifth. Stewart fights back to sixth, and Biffle somehow gets a top 20. And in 25th is Ryan Newman. After a poor run at Atlanta, he needed to run at least top five to keep it close. But yet again, he runs mid-pack. He fought valiantly to make it this far from Richmond to Texas, but Ryan Newman has been eliminated from the second chase. On the defending Nextel Cup champion's suspension from today's race in just a moment. The Rouseketeers have lost a member. Kurt Busch has been suspended after an incident with a state trooper the night before, and Kenny Wallace will be his replacement. During the early afternoon, Kurt gave this interview. Kurt, Friday, what happened? You know, on Friday I was cited for speeding, and you know, what's important here is that this is not alcohol related. You know, I made the situation worse by saying some things I regret. And that's where it's brought us to today. And I'm sorry for what happened. Your reaction to being taken out of the 97 car here today? Yeah, obviously I'm upset. It's tough. Um, you know, I'm a race car driver. There's a race today, and I'd love to be in the race. You know, my, my crew, Jimmy Fenning, I have to thank them for what they gave me. Man, it's just unfortunate. And uh, you know, I'd love to be there for them today. That's the decision that they made. Uh, and I will live with it. Thanks for the time. You got it. Shouted by the incident is Ricky Rudd, announcing that he will be taking a break in 2006, in effect retiring from cup racing. Also earlier during the week, NASCAR legend Dick Hutcherson passed away. And during the weekend, rookie Denny Hamlin won the pole. His teammate and points leader Tony Stewart could lock up the title today as well, but he would need a borderline miracle in order to do so. Second place points runner Jimmy Johnson will start second today. And Carl Edwards and Greg Biffle start third and fourth. Stewart will start in ninth, and is running a car that in its five previous starts has won and finished second three times, leading the most laps in four of those races. His confidence is high, and we go green in the, the desert. Nextel Cup championship. Denny Hamlin with his first career pole, alongside Jimmy Johnson. The green flag is out. NASCAR Racing Live on NBC. Contact between teammates off of two restrained them from passing Hamlin for lap one. Biffle gets second off of turn two, and Johnson drops back to Edwards. Tony races Jeff Gordon for ninth early on, and has a moment locking up the front tires. Harvick now navigates past Edwards and wants Johnson for third. As the run pushes on, Biffle's experience helps him pass the rookie Denny Hamlin. He collects five bonus points and starts to build his lead. Meanwhile, his teammates race hard with Johnson for fourth until a caution for Stan Bear blowing a tire. The first round of adjustments come to the field as Hamill wins the race off pit road, and he leads them to the green on lap 31. Chaser Matt Kenseth charges to the 7th place spot, and Stewart begins to follow the 17 to the 8th place spot as well. Biffle shortly after the green applies pressure to the rookie, and gets him, racing towards the most laps lead bonus. In the back, his championship rival starts to race hard for 5th, but Tony eventually prevails. Stewart then goes up and passes the 99 of Edwards, and then starts reeling his teammate. He is unable to get the third place position before a caution from Michael Waltrip lures the field back down the pit lane. Biffle holds his lead this time and the restart comes on lap 89. 
Harvick is second now, and he clears the Lavers, and Stewart slots past his rookie teammate to third. Hamlin has fallen back to fifth now and races hard with Kenseth, dragging Johnson in from seventh. As the run wears on, Mark Martin in a special throwback scheme finally works his way up to the 16th place spot, but a caution for Dale Jr. slows his progress. The 8 car blows a right front tire, and Biffle again holds his lead on the pit stops. The race restarts on lap 119, and Stewart and Edwards race hard again for fourth. The 20 car will eventually clear, and Kenseth, meanwhile, has been on and off pit lane multiple times. He's leaking brake fluid, and the team has tried to fix it, but they need a caution to have more time to do so. Newman, who took two tires on the restart, meanwhile, is fighting hard with Edwards for fourth. The two are racing hard, touching one another every so often, and finally Edwards, with a full send, gets him, and the race finally starts to settle in. The race goes by quickly, and Biffle is fast approaching the most laps led bonus, and lap traffic. He's closing on teammate Matt Kenseth, and before he can lap him, Matt randomly slows on track. He almost parks his car, and then miraculously he gets back going. He's at full song again, and nobody knows what's going on. Kenza said to just shut off, and then he tried to restart it, and it turned back on, so they keep going. Right after that, Stewart gets second, and a caution comes out from Michael Waltrip blowing another tire, and everyone pits again. Biffle holds the lead, but Kyle Busch, who was trapped one lap down under green flag, will lead them back to green, taking the wave round. Kyle tries to get away from Biffle, but Greg wants to pass him so he can have his clean air. They just barely touch. And for now, Kyle stays in front. Kyle says his car seems great in clean air, and Biffle starts to fall back to his teammate, Carl Edwards. As they race hard in the back, a caution for debris brings almost everybody down the pit lane. Kyle Busch gets the way back around and back on the lead lap, and Biffle does not win the race off pit lane this time. Many cars just take two tires, and Jeff Gordon leads on the restart with 115 laps to go. Thick traffic blocks Biffle's path to the lead, and the leaders come back to him, though, when a caution for Scott Riggs getting spun brings the field back together. Strategy now will be key here, as many are just outside their fuel window. Vickards leads some cars down the pit lane, and Gordon leads on the restart with 97 to go. As Gordon pulls away, chaos surrounds a championship leader, and Biffle on the other end is able to get away from it and chase down Gordon. He passes him, and not long after... Oh, we got trouble in turn three. Couple of cars going around. Bobby Hamilton Jr., Ma Jimmy Spencer. Did Mark get a piece of it? Skinner's in there. Big trader on that one. Well. The Hendrick cars pit, and everyone stays out under the caution, with the race restarting, and Biffle yards his teammate Edwards. The race gets impeded, however, by another caution when Brian Vickers dumps Jeff Green. Everybody pits on this caution, with the exception of the Hendrick cars staying out, and Kyle Busch leads with 81 to go now. Racing in the pack with the title contenders is crazy, as Stewart tries desperately to weave through the traffic. Kyle Petty has a close moment with Carl and Tony, but are able to evade it. Biffle is ahead of the chaos and is on a mission to get his lead back. Biffle catches Jeff Gordon and passes him for fifth, and before he can catch the battle for fourth, a caution comes out for Denny Hamlin going around. Many cars come down the pit lane now at 57 to go, and a bunch of mid-packers stay out, though. Scott Wimmer leads now with 54 laps to go and Johnson leads the Chasers' charge at 7th. Dave Blaney from 2nd wants the lead and pushes under Wimmer, and Kyle Busch meanwhile is 4th and has caused teammate Jeff Gordon who is in 3rd. Biffle is flying though, and he's up to the 5th spot, and Gordon and Kyle now push to the 07, and Biffle follows suit. They race hard for the lead, all 5 of them, all on different agendas, and they tango with one another until finally it sorts out to Kyle Busch getting the lead. Biffle finally is the second car to clear, and Wimmer's dreams of winning have now faded away. Kyle and Biffle are now going to fight it out for the final 30 laps, and the 16 and 5 duel one another side by side, but Kyle can't do anything to hold off Biffle. It seems like it's over, and just when everyone thinks so, Kyle goes right back under Biffle and they're side by side again. He clears Biffle, and then he starts to put distance on him. Biffle then comes on the radio and says that Kyle has got him and that he has nothing left. Johnson, as the race dwindles away, gets passed by Bobby Labonte for 5th, and soon Edwards is there for 6th. The 48 has faded to 7th now, and Robbie Gordon looks to put him back another spot. Johnson is able to hold off the advances, as his teammate Kyle Busch wins the race the same day his brother gets suspended. Biffle settles for 2nd, and Stewart gets 4th. Edwards is 6th, and Johnson comes up 7th, 52 points behind the 20 going into Homestead. 
Carl is 87 back from Tony, and Biffle is a long shot, 102 back. For Matt Kenseth, his brakes issue has cost him the shot he wanted. He made it further than last year, but now, with one race left, the 2003 champion has been eliminated. Jack Grouse will also lose his veteran Roushketeer, Mark Martin. A mediocre run with bad luck over the last few weeks officially eliminates him for title contention as Mark will have to wait till his last full-time season to see if he can finally win a title. This is it, the last race of the chase. Four drivers come in with a chance to win the title. The long shot Biffle is trying to become the first driver to win a title in all three series, and Carl Edwards is trying to win the title and won't be his proverbial rookie year. Jimmy Johnson is trying to finally break through and win a title after two runner-up finishes the last two seasons. They will all have to prey on the misfortune of this man, Tony Stewart who just has to finish ninth or better to guarantee his championship, no matter what. With Edsel Ford giving the command, the field rolls off the pit lane. Tony Stewart starts 20th in the 20 car on November 20th. Johnson again starts 32nd in the back for the second consecutive season. And Biffle will be 7th, and Edwards is on the pole. As they roll around the track, this will be the last race for Rusty Wallace in his career, and the last race for Bobby Labonte in the 18 car. This will also be the last time Ricky Rudd will run for the foreseeable future. With all that, it is the end of an era, and the end of the second chase the today. Pace car to pit road. Carl Edwards brings them to the green flag. The Ford 400, the championship race, is underway. Edward and Newman appear to dice it up on lap one, but in reality they made a deal for both of them to lead a lap to get their five bonus points. Carl leads lap one, and then he lets the 12 back by for lap two. Johnson, meanwhile, has already worked his way up to 29th, as teammate Gordon races hard with Biffle near the front. By lap 11, Edwards has cut the lead down to 33 points over Stewart, and then the first caution comes out. Scott Wimmer spins out right in front of Jimmy Johnson, and Brian Vickers is also heavily damaged. This lures everyone down the pit lane, and everything is uniform besides Scott Riggs hitting Ricky Rudd's pit crew. Everyone appears to be alright, and the race goes back green on lap 21. Kyle Busch gets a tire rub on the restart, and he loses the car in turn 4 and touches the wall, fading back quickly. As Dave Blaney goes for lead, a caution comes out for Kyle Busch, whose tire finally blows. Again, both Johnson and Stewart narrowly avoid the incident and restart again on lap 29. Newman holds his lead over Blaney, and Edwards in third goes for it on the top two. Edwards gets him, and then Gordon goes for third. Edwards is digging and going for the lead, three wide with a lap car under Newman. Gordon charges up to the battle again, and Edwards slips behind Gordon, and Newman holds his lead. Gordon attacks Newman now, and leads at the line, and they still go side by side, refusing to lose. Kane now catches Edwards for third, as the leaders go side by side once again. Edwards reels them back in, and Gordon gets desperate and slides up, grabbing the lead finally. After the lead battle settles, Stewart is up to 13th on lap 37, but he starts to lose pace as Bliss and Sadler pass him. Edwards, meanwhile, is up to 2nd, passing Newman, and now he's chipped the points lead down to 30. Johnson is 61 back now, and Biffle is 78. As Biffle reports a fading brake pedal, caution comes out for a spun Bobby Labonte. Everyone comes in the pit, and Edwards wins the race out the pit lane. He leads the field green and has cut Tony's lead down to 26. He pulls away, and Stewart starts to try and get up to the front. Eventually Newman moves back up to the front, and starts racing Edwards again for the lead. Biffle moves up to the 5th place position now, and Newman's attacks fade, and it's a 3-way battle for 2nd now. Mears makes it by Newman eventually, and Gordon makes a tight pass on Newman. Ryan is fuming about how Gordon's been racing him, and as the sun sets, Edwards now has the points lead down to 24. Tony is just barely holding on to his running spot, having a terribly handling race car, and he is saved by David Stremmy blowing a tire and brings everyone back down the pit lane. Tony's team tries hard to subside the car's plowing tight condition, and Carl easily wins the race off once more. The race restarts again on lap 98, 
and Gordon tries to get Edwards. They race side by side, and into three he clears and says the track is doing something he's never felt before. Before the run can really get going, a caution for Scott Riggs slows the pace once again. The race restarts again on lap 106, and Gordon pulls away from the field, and Edwards tries to close on the 24. As Gordon leads happy with his race car, his team car is struggling bad. Johnson is plummeting through the field in 20th, and he thinks that they might be losing a tire. Something is seriously wrong. He is getting passed by lappers, and the car is driving on eggshells. Johnson starts to panic as he's two seconds off the pace of the leaders, and Chad tries to calm him down, saying that they'll do whatever they can to fix what is wrong. Jimmy keeps driving harder and harder with a terrible handling car, getting worse and worse, and then... The caution has just come out for championship contender Jimmy Johnson. And the right rear tire has exploded on the 48 car. It is over yet again. Jimmy Johnson pushed too hard and blew a rear tire, destroying the rear of his car. Many set in the question now of if he'll ever win a title. He now, for four consecutive seasons, has either choked away a shot or run bridesmaid to the championship winner. They think he'll become another driver who can't close out on the title. He is now eliminated from the second chase. Gordon leads the field down pit road and Stewart begs for more front turn. Edwards gets the lead back and the race restarts just before halfway. The restart is crazy going four wide and Stewart cuts through it all to clear. Edwards tries to clear but Newman holds his position and gets the lead from him. And Gordon is catching them all now and gets a second place spot. Stewart has now faded his lead down to 27 points and Biffle has now cut the points lead down to 77. Tony's car is still tight and he's losing two more spots to 13th now. Before his points he can fall under 15 points, a caution for debris comes out, and he's saved. Everyone pits and Biffle says he thinks he can still win the title. And in order for him to do that though, Tony must finish worse than 27th. For Edwards, it's 19th or worse. And the race restarts now with just under 100 laps left. The leader of the race is now Casey Mears, and he starts to pull away. Stewart on this run finally says his car has come to him, and he works up to the 11th place position. Edwards is racing hard, getting 2nd place. And then Newman and Gordon make contact, subjecting Newman to a tire rub. The 12 comes in, and not only is he a lap down now, he's going to need a caution in order to make it on fuel. Mears is in the lead now, and he is flying through the field. Tony's starting to fade hard once again, and he is helped when Mark Martin passes Carl Edwards, helping his point situation. Mark Martin is also hard charging towards the front, and makes dicey moves through lap traffic. As he does this, the last green flag cycle begins. Kane comes in first. And then Gordon is next. Mears from the lead is trying to make up all the time on the access road and blows it, losing a ton of time to Mark. To add to the mayhem, his stop is slow, and next lap it's Mark's turn to pit. Carl follows his teammate in, and the 99 puts up a 13.5 second stop. Tony comes in soon after and makes another wave of adjustments. He comes out 17th, and Edwards has clinched the most laps led now. Mears and Martin battle now with less than 30 laps to go, and Stewart has a 30 point lead. Now with 22 to go, Tony's on the verge of getting lapped, and right before he does so, caution comes out for debris. Not only is Tony on the lead lap still, he is trapped from losing any more spots now. Once again, it's going to be a late race shootout in Homestead to finish off the season, and the strategy is mixed once more. Carl gives the same ultimatum that he gave at Texas, 6th or better he says, and he can win the race. This time however, he comes out 12th. Mears takes two and has an awful stop, losing all of his track position, and many others take two as well. With 11 laps to go, you're going to have the last restart of the year. Day Blaney leads as the pack gets unleashed. Mark Martin goes for the lead, following the lap car of Nemechek. Edwards, meanwhile, is a maniac, dicing it up through traffic and getting up to ninth already. With eight to go, the battle for the lead is neck and neck, and Patch Tyson is screaming to go for it. Biffle goes up the middle and gets the lead, going for broke. He doesn't give a damn about the title at this point. It's about the win. Carl, meanwhile, is 7th and still hard charging. As his three teammates run 1, 2, 3, Mark now with 6 to go isn't going to give it up to any of them. He stalks him now with 5 laps left. And coming now to 3 to go, the team orders is over. Mark rides the high side as Biffle gets a good exit. Mark then rolls low and is closer with 2 to go. 
Mark closes, it gets side by side with the white flag, and it's on. Teammates Mark Martin and Greg Biffle fighting for the lead while Tony Stewart tries to hang on to his position to clinch the championship. Oh, this is going to be good off the of two. This has been Biffle's sweet spot off the second corner. Mark's there. He's there. And I think Mark's been better in four. Looks that way. See if he can hold on. Boy, Biffle drove in deep. Will it stick? Oh, he's sliding up the track. Out of four, they come to the line. Wow. Greg Biffle wins the race. An absolute thriller to the finish. And now we wait on Tony Stewart. Hey, do we get second? Tony Stewart is the 2005 NASCAR Nextel Cup Series champion. And Greg Biffle, the first thing he asked, are we second in NASCAR Nextel Cup points? They're, they're tied, aren't they? Yes. He and Carl Edwards are tied for second looks like. Unofficially, they are both 35 points behind the championship winner, Tony Stewart. And there is the champion crew. Biffle will win that tiebreaker. He has done it. Tony Stewart wins his second title. The emotion is there as Greg Zipidelli has closure Again, finally. Congratulations. For his 2002 title. <laughs> That's run. awesome. Uh, couldn't be prouder of this team. You know, we uh, we didn't start out terrible, but we didn't start out as good as we wanted to, and uh, they all worked. Uh, there's an awful lot of employees back at uh, Joe Gibbs Racing that are responsible for this. We're uh, we're lucky guys to get to come and have the fun at the racetrack, spray the champagne, and uh, enjoy all that uh, all those fun things that, that, that come with winning. And uh, I. I couldn't be any prouder of Tony. That, that, that's probably the biggest thing is this kid has, uh, we've been through some ups and downs, uh, but, but being part of him maturing, and, and, and uh, we won this championship because of him, because of his attitude, because of his, uh, his winning ways, his, his efforts. You know, we, uh, he could win in any car out there. So we're just proud to be part of it. Tony said he wanted to win this championship for you because a couple of years ago, maybe things weren't as smooth as they could have been. That's what friends do. A couple of years ago, I'd have given up a lot in my life just to see him as happy and uh, as content in his life as he is today. Congratulations. Thanks. Appreciate it. Greg Zipanelli, champion crew chief for Tony Stewart. As the burnouts begin and the victory lane celebrations happen, Tony gets to climb the fence.